Oh, what a night of the Mifuya Barclays. Welcome <laughs> to Ramble React. I'm Pete Donaldson. I'm joined by Mr. Andy Brassel. Andy Brassel. You know, uh, Danny Kelly has called me that for years, actually. He's, he's, he's given it the, the European flourish as we yes. do a European show together. And I, I just think it fits. I've never corrected mm. him. I'm fine I with think, it. I think that's fair. Brassel. Yeah. Brassel. Brassel. It's, I it's mean, it's like if I was checking in at a French hotel, that's definitely what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> you usually check in under a fake name because you are very famous <laughs> and, like the best Frenchman, have many affairs. Um, I need some... I need some... Right now, Andy, I mean, I have to say, I need some therapeutic Andy Brassel um, parenting right now because I am over-stimulated. I need to get back in uh, a manageable box because right now I'm spiky. I'm up. I'm down. I don't know where I am. How dare they throw us out of Europe? How dare they throw us out of Europe, Andy? Because... They need us more than ever. You'll be back for another taste soon, Europe, because that was nothing <laughs> short of chaotic and fun, and you can stick the coefficient up your bum. Brilliant. <laughs> really enjoyed that. I mean, if, like, Andy, if, like, at the death, we're losing, right? Our keeper, uh, Martin Dubravka, is in the opposition box. Milan advancing with an open goal. Ali McCoyst on core comms. All he can say, all he can manage to utter is the word, oh, problems. <laughs> That's all he had. That's all he had. I mean, oh, if, if, if the end of that match, they didn't say you're getting kicked out of Europe, you've just got to shut a St. James's Park, the whole thing ends. It was just... It had a little bit of everything that match. I wouldn't have any yes. complaints if that was the last match my favourite football team, Newcastle United, played. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, the whole group, because I was, I was watching the uh, Dortmund game at the same time, and mm. the, the whole group was brilliant. Tonight yeah. was was brilliant, really. Um, mm. at, I, I mean, up until the point where Adi Amy scored for Dortmund, you thought this is the best nil-nil draw of all time. It was, it was <laughs> absolutely amazing. And... Um, then Kylian Mbappe had a potential winner ruled out yeah. by about like he's about three centimeters offside. Um, so there, there was a lot going on. It, it was the group that delivered in a very different way to what you thought it would at the beginning, but mm. probably came out with a similar sort of result that you, you you thought it would do because like most people thought that Newcastle would finish bottom before the start before the start they just didn't f think they would finish bottom like In that they didn't they yeah. didn't deserve to finish bottom and it, t talking of brief affairs I, I don't think they could have been <laughs> any more fleeting than Newcastle with the Europa League this evening could they I yeah mean, very so very re briefly really sad it I was looking forward to me Thursday nights yeah, you time. do. I mean, one of the few nights of the of the week um, you don't work um, usually <laughs> in in the Newcastle area, which which is upsetting to be honest. So it would have been nice one to of... get a little bit of work at St James's Park yeah. doing your thing with your keyboard. Yeah. What would that, what, you sound like like I'm Jean Michel Jarre. I'm going to be playing at <laughs> half time. Do, 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 do. It's, it's funny. What, <laughs> the chopsticks first, I think. Yes. But I, I, I think I, I had one of my favourite Newcastle in European football uh, moments mm. at, um, at, at St James's on a Thursday night in the Europa League. They, they, they'd just drawn, it was under Pards, I think. They'd drawn 1 1 with uh, Maritimo, who weren't yeah. very good, and they, they scored quite near the end. It was November, freezing cold, a bit miserable. Mm. And uh, there, there were probably about uh, 12. Uh, journalists waiting still in the in the mix zone, the the bit just outside the dressing rooms where you can like stop the players and talk to them, mm. um, to uh, talk to players. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I, I love the dedication. I love the people who are involved. And at the time, Danny Simpson was playing for Newcastle, and he was mm. dating uh, Talisa from X Factor. Right. Yes. And um, <laughs> the, the the press officer popped the red out. The door. I don't know if I should say this, but it's quite funny. The, the press officer <laughs> popped the red out the door and uh, she said uh, lads Danny's on the way but uh, no questions about Talisa and literally all of them apart from me and one other bloke just left <laughs> Really? Wow, yeah. that's all they wanted to hear about was did they not wanna did they not wanna talk about that weird soccer kid um app rip off he he, he released. He released no, a video on. game of it was called Danny Boy, I think. Uh and it was on the app store and you probably can't get it anymore, but it was basically a rip off the of the Amiga uh, game Soccer Kid, uh where uh, Danny Simpson I mean 
you know, you wouldn't sort of say Danny Simpson was like the sexy. Well, maybe Talisa Woods would say he's the sexiest footballer uh, ever to have uh, have treaded the uh, the green boards at St James's Park. But like, I just sort of think it's, it was a weird person to decide that he he warranted his own video game. I, I, I guess you've just got to get out there and say. Yeah, actually, <laughs> maybe, maybe we there. should do it. Maybe we should do a video game. Well, maybe I should do a video game. People would expect it from you, wouldn't they? They wouldn't expect well, it yeah, from me. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, the amount of times I've tried to um, rip uh, the graphics out of um, Roberto Baggio's uh, Magical Kicks to create a, a ramble specific <laughs> version. That was a, a project. You know, when you back in the day when you got a bit of free time, you go, oh, yeah, I never really got anywhere with that, did I? But anyway. Uh, but I mean, speaking of uh, European adventures, uh, Andy, you just come straight from Swiss television. Doing a bit of Swiss telly. Were you explaining the Swiss model to them? Uh, because even though it's named <laughs> after them, they, they do not understand it. <laughs> well, I, I would have done, but it was actually Australian. Oh, somebody said it was Swiss television. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. Um, so with, uh, we'll leave your um, uh, television uh, exploits uh, behind. But two shots on target um, from Milan. And, and obviously that itself doesn't tell uh, the whole story. But they no. won the match with them. I mean, Eddie, how the heck did we get kicked out um, with, with, with such a, a lively uh, and sprightly football match? Yeah, I mean, look, I think a lot's been said about Newcastle's uh, injuries, how they're picking the same team all the time because they have mm. to, et cetera, et cetera. You're gradually seeing the players coming back, which globally mm. for Newcastle is obviously quite good news. But uh, the, the thing is, I, I think the subs made the difference in this game because mm. you look, they've been able to bring on subs for the first time in a while. But the thing is, when they're bringing on these subs, you're thinking, geez, he hasn't played for ages. Yeah. And I think that makes a massive difference. You know, these guys are all completely out of nick. Coming into, like the, you know, arguably the biggest game of Newcastle season to this point. You know, the willing was there. I'm not sure the guile and the legs quite mm. were. And when Milan made their subs, I was thinking, well, you've created next to nothing. Why are you taking off Olivier Giroud? And then mm. you look, all of a sudden, with Okafor, with Chiquese, whose winning goal was brilliant, by the way. They've, yeah. they've got legs. And yeah. the way they the way they get up the pitch, the fin- it's not just the finish that's brilliant. The way they get up the pitch to score that goal is is the difference, and it's you know undeserved. I, th- I think over overall, you know, Newcastle deserved well, it, at least well, Europa was, League. But it was all about it was all about um, Fabian Scher, um, um who whose hair whitened even further uh, during that match, which you love to see. He's turning <laughs> into a beautiful, handsome older man. Uh, but he but his his hair um, like the. Um, uh, crash Test Dummy song mm, 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 mm. his hair turned from a black into bright white uh, throughout that match um, he was caught in, in doing a 1-2 in the opposition box um, but Newcastle still had players over and I thought you know what it's 4-3 on 3-on-3 three, three on three. I reckon they might be okay and obviously uh, the winning goal was a peach he had a lot to do Andy yeah he did it was, it was, it was a great finish and you almost got the same thing over again with Tamori hitting the post at the end mm. because it hits the post and you think, oh, I can't believe they haven't finished it off. And then he obviously goes back to try and retrieve the ball that's mm. rebounded from the post. You're like, oh my God, it's Tamori. <laughs> <laughs> How well, did that he, happen? Well, it's, he, he it it just defines beautiful... the chaos of the game, doesn't it? Yeah, well, well, he was kind of notable. I thought, you, you know, when a match starts and you're like, right, well, the only uh, notable thing out of this match, it might be like a really drizzly sort of uh, a goalless draw. And the only thing we're going to be talking about is Tamori's um, tackle uh, at the far post in, in the first half. And I thought yeah. that's going to be a real big talking point. You'd be lucky to, if you wrote 3,000 words on on that you'd have time <laughs> to mention that for crying out loud there was you know there was there was a player going through on goal um and uh it, he hit the post in the end it was uh lee uh Leo, wasn't it um yeah. and uh, and bruno was um if Leo was just a little bit slower bruno would have kicked his absolute ankle off because he was so ready to take a red for the team it was really astonishing see that that's obviously Raphael Lau's quite fast but I I think it's a symptom of how tired Newcastle are because you can hear like his inner monologue going oh I want to clean you out I really want to clean you out I can't can't get get there there. I can't quite get there he was was, was struggling at the end Bruno Mm. wasn't he yeah he he really was spent a lot of minutes but I mean Mm. the the, after the uh, after the, the 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 after the one all, uh, you would have taken uh, guaranteed European football. Uh, after that, the stadium really came alive once Dortmund scored, and obviously mm. that was really really good news. And and I thought, and and to be honest, although I thought that um, 
I thought that like at the point where there was a VR a VAR check for PSG, it's been disallowed. I don't think that translated into the stadium as well as the previous uh, big yeah. decisions that had, that obviously uh, come through. And you could see how Newcastle as a team were buoyed when the Newcastle fans uh, were buoyed when they found out that yeah. uh, obviously Dortmund had scored. It, it seemed to be a great night at St James's Park, and uh, and I think Newcastle can really um, hold their heads uh, high. And it wasn't lost um, th- th- this evening. And and and. What an adventure from start to finish. Um, I think the fans would, would be looking forward to a few more nights like that. Yeah, I, th- I think so. And I think that's the overwhelming sensation I had when the draw came out, that mm. whatever happens, you know, these yeah. are three enormous home games that are going to be enormously exciting. And on mm. a level of occasion, they all delivered. They, they, they were yeah. absolutely brilliant. And, you know, you had the full range of emotions from from those. And, you know, people have been into it from the off here. Like, do you know when they, they made the draw? Like, the draw is normally something that you might catch up with on your phone. Or yeah. if you're really into it, you know, you might have, like, on in the background when you're having your tea or, or, or whatever. But Not um, you, Andy. Surely yeah. you've got what about 10, 10. Surely you've got about 30-odd different uh, screens uh, looking at each ball. I'm, I'm, heat, I'm, heat, I'm heating the balls, Peter. Yeah, That's what I'm doing. Balls. I've got the hairdryer. Just through but, sheer will. <laughs> but I, I think here, people were in the pubs watching the draw. It was yeah. it was massive. Like people mm. were into it from the from the from the very off. There were some like call away trips, mm. all of that. And you know, I I personally think they won't they won't make the Champions League next season I, no. I, I, I think I think it's too hard with the improvements to to Spurs and Villa in, in, in particular particularly Villa at the moment obviously mm. um, but like look a, a load of people I speak to like look if, if we get top six we get back into like Europa League you know bring it on it's, it's yeah. fine you know it, yeah. it keeps it all bubbling is, is, is that how you feel about it? I, I, I don't know, after watching how Newcastle performed in that match and probably to a lesser extent uh, in the PSG um, route, just put us in the conference. We we will make it better. We will make it more competitive. Yes. You will watch more of Lewis Miley. You'll watch more <laughs> of people. <laughs> I mean, I did like Milan bringing on a number 95 at the end, trying to outdo our youngsters. I'm not having that. <laughs> Absolutely cynical stuff. Trying to get the clicks. Unbelievable. But yeah, but what an adventure. It was good. The, the Italians like the crazy numbers more, though. Don't yeah, they? yeah, don't, of course they do. They? I, mean, yeah. I mean, I just think that the the, the scene was set. Um, Joe Linton just before he scored what has to be one of, you know, it's the best goal he'll score at uh, St James's Park, surely. Yeah. But he did a proper muggy back heel that nearly cost uh, Newcastle about two minutes before his goal. And I thought, you know what? If it's gonna, you could kind of tell it was going to be that kind of match when he does two things: one very bad, and one <laughs> incredibly <laughs> insanely good, completely out of character. It was, it was really, really something else at least he didn't have at the death you know 94th minute um uh, header at the back post that he 50 pences into the crowd yeah, i'm, that, I'm that glad we didn't have that for crying that, out loud. that, that, would, that would have been disappointing L- mm. look I, that, they, I don't i don't think they could have given it any more if, if there's mm. one thing you would change in the group it would be the last minute penalty in paris that that, that is yeah. it really yeah. isn't it and um poor old Tino Liveramento because he got that penalty given against him and then you know after weeks of feeling that oh it'd be great if like you know a left back could come back so Trippier could get a rest and Liveramento <laughs> could could play at right back he goes over the right back and he has an absolute nightmare for 15 yeah. minutes really which yeah. made a massive difference in the game but you know he's, he's, he's a young player these things happen you know mm. uh, and also you know you you are you're damned with a with an injured Trippier and you're Damn without him a little bit, for goodness sake. Yeah. Um, Gareth, well, speaking of uh, Tino uh, Livermento and also uh, Tamori and Anthony Gordon, uh, Gareth Southgate was in uh, attendance. Uh, you know, hosting the Ramba React means I have to mention England uh, in 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 um, in uh, Marcus's absence. But uh, <laughs> any any any, I mean, Tamori has to have been probably more of the standout performer because Anthony Gordon kind of kind of uh, he got brought off at one point, didn't he? I mean, he kind of first half he looked quite. He, Look quite busy on the left, but he sort you know, of like yeah. came a bit quieter. Yeah, I I, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, obviously he can sort of hedge his bets and not necessarily play for England. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he'll, he'll end up at the Euros by hook or by crook. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. But look, look, I I think with with Tamori, it's a funny thing because he's 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 had some pretty poor games in front of Gareth Southgate when he's mm. when he's gone to see him play in Europe before. So for Southgate to turn up and Tamori to have a really good game, 
I think is is, is quite a nice departure. I mean, a lot of us would have loved to see Tamori like get more chances for England bit beforehand. I think it'd be yeah. super useful to to have a team. You know, he's, he's he's one of the better central defenders in Europe. Mm. Not one of the absolute best, but definitely one of the better ones. So I, I think it would be a shame if um, he, he didn't play a big part with with England coming into to, to Euro twenty twenty four and showing up in a big game like that um, when not just he but Milan in general have have struggled a little bit with that. You know, mm. I think you look at Milan sometimes. You think, oh, Milan seven times Champions League winners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you look at them player for player. It's not an enormous amount of experience. They've not got loads more experience in the Champions League than, say, Newcastle in terms of mm-hmm. Champions League appearances. So, um, you know, for for him to show up and and them to show up is 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 pretty good for them. But you know, you definitely saw that. I thought at the at the end of the first half, where like Mike Magnon, who again is. is an unbelievable player. Yeah. Uh, now he is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. And that, that save from Bruno Guimaraes in, in the second half was brilliant. It was ridiculous, but, wasn't it? Uh, incredible. <laughs> but but the, the, the thing is, he needed that because he's had a couple of, like probably six to eight really bad weeks. Mm. And um, there have been some big errors in that, including in the last game against against Dortmund. And you could tell, like, t- towards the end of the first half, you know, when he's spent ages complaining to the referee that Callum Wilson was standing in front of you, it's like... He's, he's ten yards away. He's allowed. <laughs> he's allowed to, he's he allowed was to so be there. Far away. He, he had a little. He had a couple of like quite um, wobbly moments, I think. And I think he was trying Ooh. to play himself back into in, into a bit of form. And uh, yeah, goodness me, didn't he just? Uh, there was a lovely mm. moment. I, th- I think. I think um, Wilson worked really hard in this match. And I think he, he's yeah. really sort of like showing what uh, an important footballer is for, for Newcastle. Not not obviously because he, he plays his, um, his spot really well, but he was really he was Harry Kaneing it. He was back in midfield first half, but he, he just couldn't keep up the keep up the juice yeah that that is that is the thing isn't it um mm. but look he, he's he's gonna get himself in the england squad next year mm. so, sorry you, you, you really have spelled this pod sorry out, i've spelled it up haven't i well <laughs> look <clears throat> let me t- let me let me uh, uh talk about another um fine um england uh, prospect uh, Gira- uh um jamal Asels. um there was a lovely <laughs> moment where the commentator uh, uh it said it was um Giroud versus lascelles and they were both just having a bit of a scrap um and there was just, they were saying both talented footballers but a physical battle between them i was going yeah, yeah, I mean, I think Giroud's come out worse there. I mean, it's <laughs> Jamal Lascelles and the other bloke has definitely won a few more things, you would probably suggest, Andy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, it is a bit sort of Yoda hitting R2-D2 with his walking stick, really, isn't it? It's that sort of business. Yeah, and a walking stick uh, would, is definitely in the offing, uh, as, you, as you would imagine. For sure. Uh, right, <laughs> we're going to take a short to advantage. So, John, uh, we'll be back with a little bit more chat, including some white hot coefficient nattering. All right, we're back with Rama Reacts. Let's get back into it. Um, Dortmund and PSG, of course, as we said before, uh, go through to the next round after their one-all draw. Uh, but with Newcastle and Man United both out of the Champions League. <laughs> This is funny. The Premier League's coefficient has been damaged and that might mean whoever finishes fifth doesn't get UEFA Champions League football next season, which was previously a possibility. It's Andy, um, again, going back to Andy's a parent, has your um, child ever got really upset in a shop and you've kind of ushered them out and in kind of protest they've just knocked over a display stand? <laughs> this is very much like, if you're going to charge me for a fizzy water in a hotel minibar, I'm going to carve my initial into the wall kind of <laughs> on my way out I'm going to fuck things up for you no because the only shop display I can really remember seeing of any sort of substance mm. um, with, with the kids I remember like probably this would have been a while ago when they were quite small mm. um, it was when they were promoting one of the FIFAs they right. had a life size Marco Royce in Sainsbury's in East Dulwich which was a bit unusual. It's na- his natural stomping ground, his natural habitat, Andy. Yeah, I think so. Well, what are was, you doing he was, here? He was flirting with one of his several variations of like sort of techno mullet at the time. <laughs> but 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 the, I think the kids were just too small to knock over the display at that right. point. Although 
he, he has been quite injury prone in his time. I reckon a little push and he would have gone straight over. Yeah, well, you imagine yeah. his, uh, his Achilles are probably made of wet cardboard. <laughs> um, so Royal Antwerp got their first uh, Champions League win uh, tonight against Barcelona, 3-2. I think Celtic won as well, another strange one, um, after the Lord Mayor Sean all that. Even worse yes. for the Barcelona players, though. Uh, public showers, Andy, have been banned uh, due to um, droughts in the region. So uh, Barca players have to shower at home and they can't um, they can't use any at the training ground. The thing about footballers is, Andy, they do have tiny wee cars and that is going to sting them out. <laughs> it is, but they also all have Louis Vuitton wash bags. So that if, is that, true, yeah. if that hasn't got a load of expensive scent in it, I mean, mm. what, what else could it have in it, really? <laughs> What, who's that? Who's that footballer who, who turned up and training with a Pornhub bag? What's it? I forget. I forget that. Fo- I forget which foot. I think it was German or something or Italian. I can't remember. But what one footballer turned up? Maybe somebody can get in touch. But um, so some football I remember turned up with a with a with a with a Pornhub uh, wash bag. The scene is so typically teenage. Nice. Well, you, you know, until quite deep into his career, mm. uh, Mishi Batswai used to like when they all turned up with like um like Vuitton wash bags yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean they, they all carry the same one don't they yeah. really um he used to always wear a Spongebob Squarepants backpack <laughs> or um or Bob Leponge as they call him in, in, in France Bob Leponge but but, but basically uh, but maybe he still wears it but yeah. it's just he's not famous anymore, so we don't <laughs> so see nobody it. Nobody cares. I, I, I don't you know. Just, look, yeah. just, just don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like oh, it's... I've upgraded. I've got a baby Yoda now. <laughs> Just trying to get more and more, or like one of those like Ninja Turtle half shells on your back for crying. Oh out loud. yes, yeah. yes, I like it. I mean, I mean, like, what's if you were like a footballer and you had to, you were joining a club for the first time, and you thought of yourself as a one-off, a um, a, a thoughtful footballer? How would you kind of set yourself apart? Would you be pulling up in a mini to the training ground? Would you be pulling up with a carrier bag under each arms, or or just smoking a big pipe? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the little car, that's that's Bernardo Silva's vibe, isn't it? He, he always, yeah, he always Silva, turns up in I think a, Angola Conte, Conte as well. I think he, he gets involved car. in the Mini. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Tino Espria used to drive a Rover when he was at right. Newcastle? Is that, uh, is that like not a, a Rover then, hatchback? Was that not a, right, no, was that, that not, a, not like a Range Rover. Like a, right. like a, like a you know, sort of middle-class dad's hatchback sort of, right, sort okay. of business, which pres- presumably had a load of... Second hand books in it, and, and just all, yeah, all and, and, and his arm, his arm out of the out, out, out the car window with um, one of his <laughs> fur coats on in the, in the castle snow. Oh, lovely stuff! I don't know, but I like. I would just come in swinging a big sword around, I reckon, <laughs> just absolutely going for it. Um, good, good, so, way, good way to make friends. Yeah. yeah. Uh, group stage in the Champions League, Andy. What have, have been your highlights? Any standouts from? Uh, I'm going to say the troubled league of Turkey, the troubled <laughs> leagues further east. Uh, any kind of um, really, really fun performances and, and, and clubs that you uh, you've really enjoyed this this group stage across well, the all thing of is, the groups. I, I think there's been so much fun in it, but I think mm. I, I'm wondering if it. I think part of it is, is, is it's been a particularly fun group stage, and I'm thinking particularly Galatasaray's three-two win at Manchester United, which yeah. shows that um, you know competence is overrated. I, th- I think <laughs> you know, and en- entertainment is is, is fun yeah. as well, um, which is kind of the direction that football's going in, I suppose, entertainment rather than sport. A bit old manny of me, but there, 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 there you go. But get but back I, in I your wonder... rover. <laughs> I'm just loading. I'm just loading the old copies of Sheridan's The Rivals first. But I, I, I just think, you know, is is it just that it's been such an entertaining group stage, or mm. is it sort of almost premature nostalgia? Because mm. of course, this is the last night of real group stage Champions League football that we're going to have for a generation, that is isn't it? True. So, yeah. So, so I think Newcastle wonder, and Man United have ruined. <laughs> <laughs> will we be looking back on this in a year? It's fine. They'll be part of the expanded conglomerate of you know this stealthy Super League that, mm. that, that exists in 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 the next couple of years. I, I mean, I wonder if we will look back at this not just as an entertaining group stage, but, you know, a sort of vintage last hurrah, you know. A oh, goodbye to our the... teenage years. Yeah, ex- oh. ex- exactly. The the, 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 the 23, 24 season group stage of the Champions League. Oh, that was a vintage year. I think we might, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of like sort of vintage kind of um, group stages uh, uh, back in the day. I mean, it was like it was very much the Man United sort of. Uh, it was Tafarel in goal for Galatasaray back in the like day, like he, yes. like um, uh, playing Man United and and uh, and teams like that, Shiktash and stuff, um, absolutely going toe to toe back in the day. Like like these are the kind of clubs that that you don't necessarily hear about doing um, doing numbers in the uh, in the Champions League um, that did back then. So yeah, I think the group stage you'll you'll kind of, you kind of forget that it, this is part of our sort of nineties nostalgia. This is this was yeah. the part of the start of our kind of um, uh, Champions League journey. So it is really really sad. Yeah, bring back Art Media Bratislava. Yeah, oh, I remember right. when. Wait, the, that, clubs that, we've lost that season that they tank Celtic and then beat Porto <laughs> at drag out. That was amazing. <laughs> Champion, I'm, try, I'm looking at Champions League. I'm trying to type it as, as quickly as I can into a Galaxy Z Fold 5. Um, hang on. Champions League. Um, Champions League Classic. Dynamo Dresden. Oh, yes. Dynamo Dresden, Andy. You having that? Uh, but basically, you're, you're saying anyone whose shirt you can get on Eminem Direct. That's what you're into. Schalke. Yeah. <laughs> Did Malmo ever get in there? I think Malmo got through the group stages. Yeah, I remember, Strom. I remember speaking to um, Carrie Arneson, who used to play for them, Icelandic guy who used to play for them. Mm. He's quite a sort of uh, legendary player for like Aberdeen and Plymouth as well. He was also... How many people have played for Aberdeen, Plymouth and lost 8-0 to Real Madrid at the <laughs> <laughs> Bow in the Champions League group stage? I mean, that's one hell of a career, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. All right, um, let's get out of here. We've had a lot of fun. Well, if you want to hear more about the other uh, group stages, if you want to hear more about st- the stinking hounds of Barcelona, uh, do have a listen to uh, On the Continent or TC on its own feed uh, this afternoon. On your Thursday, Andy, what a Thursday treat. Always oh, my Thursday treat. I don't want your Thursday treat. You have to record it. <laughs> well, my, my, my Thursday treat is the cup of tea I'm going to be having between this and OTC. <laughs> Might have, <laughs> might, might have a toasted croissant as well. Is, is oh, that permitted? Yes, I think yeah. anything is permitted in this yeah. group stage of the Champions League. Anything can happen. Dino Tirana, bring them back. <laughs> Dino Tirana, come on. All right, say then. no to uh, traffic lights. <laughs> thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for listening to today's Ramble React. The Ramble is back on Friday with a preview shot and then the mailbag on Saturday. Uh, give us an email short, footballramble.com ahead of that one with any uh, big questions you've got about football, UTI, anything really <laughs> life itself <laughs> in the meantime you can find us on Twitter TikTok Instagram and YouTube at Football Ramble and remember to subscribe on your podcast app farewell Andy Brassel thank you for joining us ciao, ciao. and that has been Newcastle United in the Champions League cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel which means you will not miss a single upload 